So now we're going to be starting the chapter on the urinary system. Um, so the urinary system, the components for that include uh, a pair of kidneys, there's two ureters, there's a bladder, and a single urethra. Uh, so again, kidneys end up filtering blood. Okay, they help maintain your water balance. They help maintain your pH, your blood pH. Kidneys, they do a lot. It's critical, it's crucial. Uh, you can't live long without a liver. You can't live long. This is one of the organs that you can't live very long without. Um, so, yeah, after the kidneys, they filter that blood plasma. They end up returning the vast majority of the water as well as the solutes back into the bloodstream. The remaining water and sol solutes, whatever is left that's removed, they end up making what we call, what is referred to as urine. Uh, so here you go. You can look at the, the photograph. Here's your diaphragm again. And uh, this is your, uh, well, this eventually ends up being your inferi super, uh, inferior vena cava. So it will lead to there. And this is coming off of the aorta. This is the, the descending aorta, actually. And there's a there's a, a renal artery that branches off of this aorta to enter each uh, each kidney. All right, so again, you have a pair of kidneys. And when you notice that, you'll see that uh, the left kidney is a little bit higher than the right kidney. All right, now you can see that coming off the two kidneys, you have these tubes which are referred to as the ureters. And the ureter connects the kidney to the this temporary storage bag, which is called the, uh, the bladder, urinary bladder. And the urinary bladder has this uh, opening, or I'm not opening, a tube called the urethra, which enters uh, eventually, the, uh, it opens to the outside of the environment of the uh, the urinary system, for that matter. <clears throat> Again, there's another photograph of that. Another picture of the of the of the kidney. You see over here, sitting on top of the kidney, you have these adrenal glands or the supra renal glands. Supra means above. Okay, supra means above. Renal means kidney. So the glands above kidney. Okay, supra renal plants. Uh, so in terms of kidney function, I, I told you about you know, kidneys maintaining your, your blood pH. Aside from that, they maintain your blood volume. Uh, also, you know, they regulate the ionic composition of blood. Uh, they help regulate the 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 levels of enzymes within the blood as well. They help maintain blood pressure. Um, they help maintain the osmolarity of blood. Uh, they also, they, um, they produce certain hormones and they also help uh, control your blood glucose levels. And again, what you, we all know mostly is that the kidneys, they produce urine, right? And urine is just one of the, the, the removals of, of not only foreign substances, but also things that we may have in access end up being remo removed as well through urine. Um, right, when you look at the external an an anatomy of the kidney, you see that there's a hilum, a renal hilum. Then there's uh, three layers of tissue that surround the kidney. There's a capsule, which is the deep layer. There's the adipose capsule, the middle layer. And then there's the, the, the fascia, the renal fascia, or again, uh, the superficial layer. Yeah, that's present. So when you look over here, this is just a cross section over here. You can see the the kidneys are over here on this side and that side. Uh, they're flanked by the liver uh, on this end over here. And this end over here is just mostly digestive organs that are, that are found. There's also spleen and rib that you can see over here and there. Um, more pictures, more pictures. When the, uh, if the kidneys, they start to droop, one of them is drooping, that's called nephropatosis, right over here, okay? Nephropatosis.
All right. Now, internally, as far as anatomy goes for the kidneys, there's two parts. There's two main regions. There's the, the renal cortex. There's the renal medulla. Okay. Renal cortex and medulla. Uh, inner part is the medulla. The outer part is the cortex. Okay. For the kidney. Um, now, the medulla, the renal medulla, it's made up of many renal pyramids. Okay, many, 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 many pyramids make up the renal medulla. Uh, portions of the cortex, they extend between the, the, the renal pyramids and are, and again, they form what's called the renal column. Being the renal column. Um, in the front, renal pap. All right, let's look at photographs to go over these. Okay. What do we see here? This is that extramost capsule, and then you have the cortex. Okay, capsule cortex. Um, these are the major calyces. This is a major calyx. It's another major calyx. Uh, that scene over there. Uh, let me see. There's another photograph that you can see this a little bit better. All right, good. So over here, when you see that, what do we have over here? Perfect. This is that cortex right over here. Okay, the renal cortex over here. And then you have the renal medulla, the inner part. This is all renal medulla. So you notice, okay, if you look at just look at the color changes, you have a light, whatever brown, I guess, and then there's a dark brown. Um, so the light brown area, that's all cortex, and these triangle-shaped dark areas are the, I guess, um, these are the medulla, the renal medulla. So now between the medulla, you have these areas over here. Those are called the, the, the renal columns. Okay, so this is the renal column that you have. Um, What else is there? The tips are called the, the, the papilla, the renal papilla are the tips. And each tip will then lead to this area over here. And when you look, um, so again, th there's the re renal pyramid over here. Uh, so they end up coming into these openings, right? So, All right, let's see, do have another photograph? Okay, oh, so, sorry. The renal artery, when you look at the blood supply of the kidney, renal artery goes into the segmental artery, segmental artery into the interlobar artery, interlobar artery, then we'll go into the arcuate artery, artery. The arcuates then divide into these cortical radiate arteries. The cortical radiates divide into smaller afferent arterioles. Then you end up, then they lead to the glomerular capillaries. 
the glomerular capillaries, then they end up getting tied to the efferent arterioles, uh, and then they end up going to the peritubular capillaries. Then on the venous end, you have the peritubular venules, cortical radiate veins, arcuate veins, the intralobar veins, and the renal vein. Uh, over next, after that, you have the, the nephrons. So when you look at nephrons, they're made up of renal capsule and renal tubule. So now, again, the components of the renal capsule, they're the, the capillary network, okay? This is the glomerulus. And then there's the, the Bowman's capsule, okay? Or the glomerular capsule. Uh, so how does this, the, the filtrate pass through, okay? The renal tubule. So it starts at these proximal convoluted tubule, then it goes to the loop of Hanel, and then it goes to the distal convoluted tubule. Okay, so this is the flow. So here you can see uh, over here that, uh, what do they have? Right, so have the efferent arterial, well, they don't have, here, so they're showing you the afferent arterial, it goes over here, and then once the blood, the plasma, it ends up being pushed out, it comes into this Bowman's cap, uh, capsule, it gets collected here, along then again it falls into these tubes and it kind of goes out it comes from this tube and then it just kind of gets filtered out everything comes out and then it's surrounded by capillaries then it ends up getting reabsorbed uh, everything minus the junk and then eventually all that garbage or junk it ends up coming and collecting over here into these tubes which then eventually drop by drop, again, throughout the day, ends up turning into urine. Here's another photo that kind of goes over the same thing that I kind of told you. So actually here, this is a better flow over here. It tells you that from the, the, the Bowman's capsule, you go from the um, fluids move to the primary convoluted tubule. From there, the, dis, the descending limb of the nephron loop. From there, the ascending limb uh, of the nephron loop. What else is there? Um, all right. Kidney transplants, um, again, you have to be on a waiting list and it's, it's, it's difficult to get kidneys. Now, you know, you, you need only one kidney to, to live. Uh, so you can donate one kidney and still live. So here you can see, this is that Bowman's capsule over here. So as blood comes, the particles, they can move freely, they can fall out where they want. Okay, there's these principal cells that we have over there. And again, they are sensitive to two hormones. And that's aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone. Aldosterone and uh, antidiuretic hormone. Uh, aside from that, there's also the intracaliated cells that we have over there. Um, okay, if there is an infection, or again, there's inflammation of the glomerulus, we call that glomerul glomerulonephritis. Uh, functions of the nephrons. Okay, functions of the nephrons essentially are there to filter the, glomer the, the, the glomerul glomerular contents. It reabsorbs uh, water and uh, other ions that uh, it needs or that may be in low amounts in the body. And then it ends up secreting whatever it doesn't need. Okay. So here you go. You can see here, here's that glomerular capsule. There's this afferent arterial, there's the efferent arterial over here. So as that filtrate is moving through, uh, oh, as it's moving through, okay, a lot of things end up being pushed out, other things come back in, and uh, then they start to pass through, all right? And then also you got a blood vessel that's uh, running the length of this tubule as well.
All right, the fluid that enters the capsule space, we call that the filtrate, or the glomerular filtrate. Now, on an average day, that glomerular filtrate is about 150, wow, that's a huge number, 150 liters in, in, in women and 180 in, the, in, in males. Okay. Now, just as we saw in, in capillaries, you end up having the same thing over here. Through the fenestration, those filtered substances, they move from the bloodstream, okay, through these barriers. There's a basal lamina, there's these uh, pedicels, and then there's the fenestrations. What else is there? So the volume of, of fluid that's filtered by the renal cor uh, cor corpuscle is, you know, it's actually much greater uh, than in other blood capillaries. Now, why is that the so why is that the case? So glomerular uh, gl the glomerular capillaries they end up creating a much 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 larger surface area okay, for filtration to take place than what we we're able to do, uh, you know, even on a daily for over the course of a month or a week for that matter. Uh, they, they have a very um, okay. Again, you can see some of the fenestrations over here. Mm -hmm. All right. So epithelial cells along the, the renal tubule as well as the, the renal ducts, they carry out the, the role of reabsorption. Uh, again, the proximal convoluted tubules, they make up the, the largest uh, contribution to it though, okay? All right. Tubular secretions, all right. Tubular secretions, again, this is transferring materials from blood and the tubes into that glomerular filtrate, okay? So it's transferring the solids into the, the filtrate. So what, what's being secreted, all right? They include potassium, hydrogen, ammonia. Uh, yeah, uh, antibiotics also, other drugs, they all get removed. Um, it's a couple of important roles, right? Secretion of hydrogen ions. It's this is what helps regulate your your blood pH. Um, all right. When your kidney is zone work, we call that renal failure. And at that point, you need dialysis. This is where they connect you, 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 you to a machine. The machine essentially takes out all your blood, passes through a filter, and then it returns it back to your body. Uh, it's, it's painful, it's discomforting, and again, it's a threat because you can get an infection there. Now, ureters, they transport urine from the renal pelvis of one kidney to the bladder, the urinary bladder. They don't see the solid in the rear, you know, just look at this. Uh, the urinary bladder, when you look at that, the bladder is a hollow, it's a muscular organ. Uh, again, it's found anterior to the rectum, and females found anterior to the, anterior to the vagina and inferior to the unis, uterus. Um, all right. Now, the three codes, uh, we'll go over it. So again, as far as the, 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 okay, what makes the walls of the urinary bladder? So again, the three layers. So you have the adventitia, this is the serosa. You have the muscularis, okay, this is the muscular layer. And there's, there's just two layers of muscles, so the internal, urethral sphincter, and then there's the external urethral sphincter. And then there's the mucosa, here the rugae. Um, all 
again, now you move on. So here's the ureter, ureter, it connects over here. Now this part over here in the midline the, the, of the, the ureter, what's most central, you see that there's triangle shaped structure is there. Uh, now, this is a site where A, you end up uh, people that don't use the toilet, for example, uh, too much. They end up storing and storing and storing their urine. And sometimes just holding urine back too much, it, it causes problems. Uh, especially if you don't clean yourself properly after you urinate, you can end up having a bacteria that start to grow over here. This is the opening, right? So it starts to grow backwards in these individuals, unfortunately. And then it causes infection in the, in the urethra as well as over here into this part. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. Now, if you can't control your bladder and you urinate on yourself, that's called incontinence. Okay, incontinence. So again, the urethra is a very small tube that goes from the uh, exterior body. Okay, yeah. So it, it's going to connect your bladder to the external, uh, the external of the body. That's the the job for the urethra. It's another tube. Right, so in men, the men, they pass the, the urethra through uh, the, your, the, the prostate, then through the deeper peroneal muscles, and then again, finally, it ends up being extended throughout the penis, throughout the line of the penis. Okay. There you go. This is the bladder, as you can see in males, the bladder kind of passed through this part over here. So, um, throughout this urethra, there's lots of glands, and they're not showing you pictures of that. I was hoping it'd pop up, but again, it's not. Anyways, so you have a um, prostate gland, it secretes this product comes over through it comes out through here prostate gland there is the seminal glands so again there, there, there's a few different types of glands and again they're already um, they're constantly working they're constantly producing your, your analysis or UA again they're they're checking for different type of uh, components I guess there, this might must maybe it's a uh, depending on the hospital and what the priority is, they're a different turnaround time. So it may not really be a stat order. All right, that's it for, for this chapter. Let us stop recording.